Is permitted, yeah? Please. Mm. American. <laughs> I might as well wear a sign. Yankee Doodle. German. Berlin. Ernst Ludwig. Clifford Bradshaw. Pennsylvania. Are we slowing down for the German border? Yeah. You've taken this trip before. Yeah, many, many times. 
You are a tourist. No, not exactly. I'm a writer. And I give English lessons. Here for a cigarette. Hey, Ludwig. Yeah. Cigarette. No, thank you. Deutsche Kreiskontrolle. Deutsche Kreiskontrolle, you're in pass, bitte. Ah, welcome to Germany, Mr. Bradshaw. Yours? You're in pass, bitte. Wie war der Geschäftlich in Paris? Nein, auf eine Urlaubsreise. Hast du sie den Koffer? Haben Sie nur diesen einen Koffer? Ja, yeah, das ist alles. I wish that you will enjoy your stay in Germany and a most happy new year. <laughs> What's in the bag? Bubbles from Paris, perfume, silk stockings, but more than is permitted. <laughs> you understand? I guess I've done a little smuggling myself. You are most understanding. Oh. I thank you very much. And I would like to see to it that Berlin will open its arms to you. We begin tonight, New Year's Eve, the Kit Kat Club the hottest spot in all Berlin. Telephones on every table. Girls call you. <laughs> Boys call you. <laughs> you call them. Instant connection. Thanks, but I've still got to find a room. You have no room, but this is no problem. I know the finest residence in all Berlin. Just tell <laughs> Fräulein Schneider that Ernst Ludwig has recommended you. I can't afford the finest residence in Berlin. I need something inexpensive. Ah, uh, this is inexpensive, very inexpensive. I don't care if it's awful, as long as it's cheap. But this is awful. You will love it. <laughs> Fräulein Schneider. You see. You see, you have a new friend, Ernst Ludwig. You have a fine place to live. Don't you have perhaps even your first English pupil? <laughs> yeah, so welcome to Berlin, my friend. Welcome to Berlin. Welcome to Berlin. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome from the étranger, stranger. Glück, glück, zu sehen. Das wie Sanchante. Happy to see you. Bleibe reste. Stay. You see here, Bradshaw, all comforts. And with breakfast, only 100 marks. It's very nice, Fräulein Schneider. In fact, too nice. You don't have something cheaper. But for a friend of Herr Ludwig? I have very little money. But you will give English lessons. Many pupils will come. They will pay you and you will pay me. 50 marks, that's my absolute limit. Oh, no, 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 no. That's unacceptable. If you have anything else, I don't care how small, how far from the bathroom. But for a professor, this is more suitable. I am not a professor. Think of me as a starving author. What do you have for a starving author? An author? A poet. You have the look. A novelist. And you will be most famous, there is no doubt. Thanks. This is your room. Here's for your clothing. Look, even a table for writing. Yes, but come, come, I... Come, come, I come, 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 sit. Sit. There. Mm. A novelist, just like years ago, when in all my rooms, persons of real quality... But I can still only pay 50 marks. This room is worth 100 marks, more than 100. 50. You say 50 marks, I say 100 marks. A difference of 50 marks, why should that stand in our way? As long as the room's to let, the 50 that I get is 50 more than I had yesterday, yeah? <laughs> when you're as old as I, is anyone as old as I? What difference does it make? An offer comes, you take. For the sun will rise and the moon will set. You learn how to settle for what you get. It'll all go on if we're here or not, so who cares? So what? 
so who cares? So what? When I was a girl, my summers were spent by the sea. So what? And I had a maid doing all of the housework, not me. So what? Now I scrub up the floors and I wash down the walls and I empty the chamber pot. If it ended that way, then it ended that way. And I shrug and I say, so what? For the sun will rise and the moon will set And you learn how to settle for what you get It'll all go on if we're here or not So who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? When I had a man, my bosom was boyish and flat So what? Through all of our years, he was so disappointed in that So what? Now I have what he missed and my bosom is full, but he lies in a churchyard plot. If it wasn't to be that he ever would see the abundance of me, so what? For the sun will rise and the moon will set, and you learn how to settle for what you get. It'll all go on if we're here or not, so who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? So once I was rich, and now all my fortune is gone. So what? And love disappeared, and only the memory lives on. So what? If I've lived through all that, and I've lived through all that, 50 marks doesn't mean a lot. If I like that you're here, and I like that you're here, Happy New Year, my dear, so what? For the sun will rise and the moon will set And you'll learn how to settle for what you get It'll all go on if we're here or not So who cares? So what? So who cares? So what? It all goes on So who cares? Who cares? Who cares? So what? <laughs> 50 marks? Yes. An additional blanket. The telephone is in the hall. I'll bring towels. Come in. Fräulein Schneider. There you are. There is no hot water in the bathroom the second time this week. If uh, you'll excuse me, Herr Bradshaw. Oh, I see you have finally rented this room. <laughs> this is Herr Clifford Bradshaw, the world famous American novelist. <laughs> How do you do? I am Fräulein Kost. Across the hall? <laughs> Please feel free at any time. <laughs> where are you? My nephew. <laughs> he is visiting me from Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come, we'll talk outside. We are disturbing Herr Bradshaw. And take your nephew with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Hamburg. My apologies, Herr Bradshaw. I guarantee she will not bother you again. Bother me? Yeah, yeah. What is it now? Fräulein Schneider, it is 11 o'clock. Oh. oh, 11 o'clock already. I was just showing Herr Bradshaw his room. Herr Bradshaw, Herr Schulz, who also lives here. Pleased to meet you. You are an American, huh? I have a cousin in Buffalo, Felix Tannenbaum. It is possible you know him, huh? Uh, he has a wife, a Bertha. I almost never get to Buffalo. Oh. Herr Schulz is the proprietor of the finest fruit market on the Nullendorf oh. Platz. Italian oranges, they're delicious. I will dress now. Herr Schulz has been kind enough to ask me to join him for a glass of schnapps oh. for the new year. And a little fruit. Yes. And after all, why not? Otherwise, I'm in bed with a hot water bottle. Oh. Perhaps her branch or? No, but thanks. Another time. Yes. I want to wish you much mazel in the new year. Mazel? Jewish, it means luck. Well, thank you. The same to you. Oh. Fräulein Schneider, I come to you in 10 minutes, huh? With the schnapps. And the fruit. And now, Herr Bradshaw, anything you require, knock on my door day or night, huh? Also, welcome to Berlin. Welcome to Berlin, famous novelist. Open the Remington. Hello? Hello? That's what you came here for? 
sitting on the low light, you happen to catch my eye. Would you like to buy a girl a drink? Welcome to Berlin, famous novelist. Yeah, you would. Come on over. <laughs> Monsieur, ladies and gentlemen, and now the Kit Kat Club is proud to present the most talented young lady out of England. She is so talented, so charming, so... So... Woo -woo -woo! Only yesterday I said, I want you <laughs> for my wife. When she said, mm, your wife, <laughs> what would she want with me? <laughs> I give you the toast of Mayfair, Fräulein Sally Ball. <laughs>
Absolutely. Oh, you're American. But you speak English beautifully. <laughs> I'm at table number seven. Would you just keep talking, please? You can't imagine how starved I've been. <laughs> okay, um... Let's see. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere people shout, but... There is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Yes. Yes, go on, please. That's all there is. <laughs> My name is Cliff Bradshaw. I come from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You never heard of it? Uh, such a beautiful language. Are you alone? Yes. Well, come and let me buy you a drink, but not right at this time. <laughs> It is almost midnight. Husbands, you have only ten seconds in which to lose your vibes. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. Happy New Year. Why did you say you were English? A whim. You never had a whim? Constantly. Mm. I used to love pretending I was someone else. Someone quite mysterious and fascinating. Then, one day, I grew up and realized I was mysterious and fascinating. I'm Sally Bowles. Are you new in Berlin? Yes, I've only been here three hours. Three hours? And how long are you planning to stay? I'm working on a novel. I'll stay till it's finished. Oh, you're a writer. Uh, well, Would I know any of your books? It's highly unlikely. Anyway, it's book singular. Was it a huge success? They said it showed promise. Promise? Let's talk about Sally Bowles. What part of England are you from, London? Stratford, Stonehenge. No, Cliff, you mustn't ask me questions. If I want to tell you anything, I will. Why did you come to Berlin to do your novel? I'd already tried London, Rome, Venice. Just looking for a place to write? Something to write about. Where are you staying? And you, where do you live? Over the club. Mm, we could perhaps sneak up the stairs later on if you like. Sneak. Max is most terribly jealous. Max? Mm. Your husband? Oh, no. He's just the man I'm living with. This week. I say, am I shocking you talking like this? I say, are you trying to shock me? Trying to shock you? You're quite right, you know. <laughs> oh, tell me, is there truly a place called Mudville? Absolutely, it's in New Jersey. <laughs> Hello. Happy New Year. Well, thank you. The same to you. My name is Bobby. <laughs> oh, I'm at table number four. Hello. <laughs> I was introduced to you in London at the Nightingale Bar. The Nightingale Bar? You were there, correct? Correct. Ah, I knew uh. it. I'm fabulous with faces. Would you care to dance? Not right now. But everyone dances together Not right here. now, thanks anyway. Oh, you Americans, you are so inhibited. <laughs> but this is Berlin, so why don't you just relax? Take off your corset. Be yourself. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sitting all alone like that. You happen to catch my eye. Would you like to buy a girl a drink? Sorry. Oh, goodbye. Hello. Hello. Table four is calling table nine. How are you, mister? Don't Sitting all alone like that. 
You happen to catch my eye. Would you like to give a girl a dance? Yeah, why not? Goodbye. <laughs> You know what is the trouble with English? It is not German. <laughs> it is not an exact language. 
Or one must memorize 50,000 words, or one cannot speak it correctly. Either one must memorize, or one cannot speak. Oh. Uh -huh. I, the, <coughs> oh. Nope, the time is now finished. I'm in no hurry. The lesson is one hour, and there's a pupil is waiting, no? What other pupil? No other pupil? Then I make a suggestion. I will telephone to a lady friend, and she will bring a friend for you. Elsa, a genuine flapper. Not tonight, Ernst. Uh, you have not seen this, Elsa. Hot stuff, believe me. In one minute, I guarantee you are making a pass after her. A pass at her. Ah. <laughs> a pass at her. The trouble is, I've got a date tonight. A typewriter. What can one do with a typewriter? Not very much lately. Then come with me. We make a large whoopee. For one thing, I've got a budget, and it only allows for a very small whoopee, unfortunately. Then you are my guest. I will show you the real Berlin. So come, we will acquaint with one another. As soon as I can afford it. You know, it is difficult adjusting to the idea of a poor American. <laughs> I tell you a secret. There is no need for this poverty. If you are willing, I show you a most excellent way to supplement your income. Doing what? By taking very brief trips to Paris. A few days each time, nothing more, but it will pay you well. Extremely well. Come in. Herr Bradshaw, there's a young lady to see you. A young lady in a fur coat. Young lady? Fräulein Wohl. Wohl? Wohl. Ask her to come in. You are old friends, you and Fräulein Bowles, from London, perhaps? From the Kit Kat Club last night. Last! You are some snappy operator. Hmm. Would you be a dear and get my bag? Oh, it's lovely, Fräulein Schneider. All of these wonderful old pieces. How oh, you can put it anywhere. I'll unpack later. Unpack? Herr Bradshaw didn't mention it. I'll only anything. be here temporarily. I'm sorry, it's not possible. How much you pay? 50 marks. 60 marks? It's not the money. 70. I can't permit it. 80. The room is worth 100. More than 100. 80. 85? And uh, now, please make yourself cozy, Frau Bradshaw. <laughs> Such a to-do. I will see you Friday for the next lesson. But I tell you something. I think I'm taking from you the wrong kind of lesson. Sally, now what the hell is this all about? Oh, would you guess I was terrified? Were you? What have you thrown me out? Can you imagine how that would feel? Mm. Being thrown out twice in one day? You mean Max? Dear Max, and you know whose fault it was, don't you? If you hadn't come into the Kit Kat Club and been so dreadfully attractive and recited uh, poetry. Yeah, Sally, about your stay. You know here, what I'd it's, it's love? A spot of gin. Gin. Well, you've got some. I mean, I think one might. No, I don't have any gin. Oh. Oh, well. Prairie oysters, then. Prairie oysters? Uh, practically live on them. It's just a couple of raw eggs washed about in some Worcestershire sauce. Mm. It's heaven for a hangover. I haven't got a hangover. Mm -hmm. That's quite a coat. Should be. Cost me all I had. Little did I realize how soon I'd be unemployed. Well, what about your job at the club? Well, that's rather complicated. You see, one of the owners of the club and Dear I was sort of... Dear Max? You're divinely intuitive. <laughs> I do hope I'm not going to fall madly in love with you. Are you in the theater in any way? Oh, well, then you're safe, more or less. Although, I do believe a woman can't be a truly great actress until she's had a few passionate affairs and had a heartbreaking. Oh! 
Oh, I should have let out to pay for my cab fare. It's got all that money from Paris. From Paris? Hmm. Smuggles it in for some political party. Ernst is in politics? Didn't you know? Hmm. Goes to Paris about once a month. Brings back pots of money. And he has to smuggle it in? Oh, it's terribly dangerous. But Ernst is so resourceful, he's discovered that the customs people almost never open the bags of the non-German, so just before the border, he finds an innocent-looking Englishman or American. It's hard to imagine an American that gullible. <sighs> Hals und Beinbruch means neck and leg break. It's supposed to stop from happening, I doubt it does. Sally, it's about time we... Drink. It's amazing. You know what this tastes like? Hmm. Peppermint. Oh, mm. well, it's your toothbrush glass. I should have rinsed it. Sally, you've got to understand. Oh, it, this it, is it's... your novel. It's in German. <sighs> mein Kampf. It is not my novel. I thought I should know something about German politics. Why? You're an American. You know, I've never known a novelist before. Uh, well, I've been out to watch your work. I promise I'll be incredibly quiet. I don't think I could write with someone else on the premises. Well, then I'll go on to where you're writing. Well, Take I... Take long, invigorating walks. In the middle of the night. And there's another thing. I am not a prude. Are you homosexual in any way? Bobby says you are. Bobby. One of the boys at the club. He claims he met you in London at the Nightingale Bar. It's possible. It is. How fascinating. And did you and Bobby have an affair? Did he say that? He implied it. The fact is, Bobby is not my type. I say, am I shocking you talking like this? No, no, not a bit. But it is true. I mean, you're not just saying it, hoping I'll grab my bag and run screaming into the night. The thought had occurred to me. <sighs> but it's all true. However, it's not the sort of thing you necessarily go around advertising. Oh, no, I guess not. Isn't that sad? Because I think people are people. Well... No, really, I do, Cliff. I don't think they should be made to apologize for anything they do. For example, if I were to paint my fingernails green, and I do happen to paint them green, well, if someone should ask me why, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty, I yes, reply. I, so I, if someone should ask about you and me one day, you have two alternatives. You could either say, yes, it's true, we're living in delicious sin. Or you could simply tell them the truth and say, I met this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfectly wonderful place. As I lifted a glass to the start of a marvelous year. Oh, you knew it, she called on the phone, inviting. Next moment, I was no longer alone, Shut. but sat reciting some perfectly beautiful verse in my charming American style. How I dazzle the senseless was truly no less than a crime. Now I've this perfectly marvelous girl in this perfectly beautiful room. much too distracting. Distracting? Yes. So inspiring. She tells me perfectly marvelous tales of her thrillingly scandalous life, which I'll probably use as a chapter or two in my book. And since my stay in Berlin was to force creation, what luck to fall on this fabulous sauce of stimulation. Perfectly marvelous, too, is her perfect agreement to be just as still as a mouse while I'm giving my novel a word. Yes, I've a highly agreeable life in my perfectly beautiful room with my nearly invisible, perfectly marvelous girl. Sally, I... Oh, it's a taxi man. Hello, taxi man. Just...
put them anywhere. I'll unpack later. Can you let me have three marks? <clears throat> that includes a tip. Seriously, please may I stay? Sally, I can't afford. Only for a day or two. Please. I met this truly remarkable girl in this really incredible town, and she skillfully managed to talk her way into my room. Oh, I have a terrible feeling I've said a dumb thing. Besides, I've only got one narrow bed. We'll think of Has a perfectly marvelous roommate. Some people have two people. Out, out, out! No. Uh, wait. 
wait. How dare you? You think it is easy finding a sailor? That was only my second one since New Year's. And what is it now? April. Your second? Your second? You think I do not know what goes on in this house? Sailors all the time, in, out, in, out. God only knows what the neighbors think I have here. A battleship. <laughs> Fräulein Kost, I give you warning. One sailor more. I call the police. And if I cannot pay the rent? The rent is due each Friday, as always. No sailors. No rent. I move. Move? Move! And what am I supposed to do with your room? Out of the blue, she tells me I move. Is that gratitude? Only last week I bought you another new mattress. Very well. I leave at the end of the week since you insist. I insist? You insist? And what about the sailors? The sailors. Fräulein Kost, if you wish to continue living here, do not let me catch you bringing in the sailors, you understand? Very well. So it is the same as always? It is not the same as always. Fräulein Kost, I have put my foot down. Fräulein Kost? Fräulein Kost? Fräulein Schneider, good evening. Oh, good evening, Herr Schultz. Such a surprise. You are occupied? Oh, no, 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 no. Free as a bird. Uh, forgive my appearance. It is most becoming. Thank you. I have brought you a little something from the shop. Another little something? With my compliments. Oh, so heavy. What can it be? Let me see. Pears, possibly. Oh, oh. Ach, last Wednesday you brought me pears and such pears. Apples, maybe. No. Friday was apples. Friday was apples. Mm -hmm. So I cannot guess. Then open it. Herr Schulz, can I believe what I see? Oh, but it's too much to accept. So rare, so costly, so luxurious. If you bought me diamonds, if you bought me pearls, if you bought me roses, like some other gents might bring to other girls, it couldn't please me more than the gift I see. A pineapple for me. If in your emotion you began to sway, went to get some air, or grabbed a chair to keep from fainting dead away. It couldn't please me more than to see you cling to the pineapple I bring. Now I can hear Hawaiian breezes blow. <laughs> it's from California. Even so, how am I to thank you? Kindly let it pass. Would you like a slice? That might be nice, but frankly, it would give me gas. Then I shall leave it here. Not to eat, but see a pineapple for me from me. But you mustn't bring me any more pineapples, you hear? It's not proper. It's a gift uh, a young man might bring to his lady love. It makes me blush. Oh, but there's no one, no one in all Berlin who's more deserving. If I could, I would fill your entire room with pineapples. 
a pineapple for you, from you. I think I'll go and lie down for a few minutes. My head is spinning. So, good evening, Roland Schneider. Good evening, Herr Schulz. Oh. I am uh, overwhelmed. Good evening, oh. Herr Schulz. <laughs> Good evening, Fräulein Kost. I was looking for a coin, a groschen. Hmm. I think it rolled this way. You are looking for a groschen? <laughs> I am looking for two marks. It's not the novel. I'm writing to my mother, thanking her for the check. Finally arrived. She says she's knitting you a sweater. You're joking. I've started a sweater for your friend Sally. You sent her my measurements. The way she knits, it doesn't matter. Oh, and she says tell Sally to lay off the gym. Where? She does not. Listen to this. We're all really excited about you finishing your book. What a liar I am. It's my fault. 
If I hadn't been dragging you off to party after party. Oh, but I like those parties. The fact is, I like this whole city. It's so tacky and terrible, and everyone's having such a great time. If this were a movie, you know what would happen? A volcano would erupt, or there'd be a tidal wave. Maybe you should write for the cinema. Oh, as soon as I finish the novel. As soon as I start the novel. There must be something to write about. Sally Bowles. Of course. Told you I'd be inspiring for you. The affairs of Sally. <laughs> they make me ravishing and sublimely seductive, so no man can resist me. Not even a very attractive, rather strange young American who allows me to share his room and his bed and who falls desperately in love with me. This is fiction. Guaranteed bestseller. Now all I've got to do is write it. Oh, poor Cliff, it is my fault. I'm afraid I am rather distracting. You really are. Who could possibly do any work with you around? Sally, I didn't mean... No, but it's time, Cliff. I've never stayed so long with anyone. What is it? You have a better offer? Dozens. One must keep mobile, mustn't one? I'm sure you've got offers, too. Dozens. A couple. Not one. Not even that persistent Gottfried, what's his name? Von Schwarzenbaum. Von Schwarzenbaum. He telephoned three times yesterday. And I don't get it. In America, if you tell someone you're not interested in them, you don't want to talk to them. In fact, you wish the hell they would go away. They usually take the hint. But in Europe, Why did you give them your number? I must have been drunk. <laughs> well, whatever. You captivated him. Wish I could have been at that party. Fly on the wall. It wasn't that exciting, believe me. It seems to have been exciting for Gottfried von Schwarzenbaum. Don't go. What? Don't go. Are you serious? One must keep mobile, mustn't The one? hell with What's it, I... come over you? Maybe I like you here. I need you here. I need your hairpins on the rug. If it's really goodbye, I can't stop you, I know. Don't go. No, it's not goodbye. I'm just moving on. Have you noticed I wear my heart on my sleeve? Don't leave. Just think. You'll be able to ride listen, uninterruptedly. Listen, Sally. Sally. To you, I'm just another face, a warm, convenient place, a casual romance. But to me, you're more than just a girl. You are the I can't wish you luck as you're walking away. Please stay, Sally, stay, Sally, stay. You may think I'll be glad if von Schwarzenbaum calls, but that's not so. some sort of a joke we're going to laugh ourselves sick about later on. If it's a joke, it's on me, I guess, because the words just keep coming out all by themselves. And I seem to mean it maybe more than I've ever meant anything. The truth is, I can't imagine this crummy room without you. It is a crummy room, oh, no question. Oh, you could possibly live here. This life, this giddy, hectic life, this harem scarum life, I've never lived before, but you, 
It fits you like your skin. And just when I fit in, your hand might close that door. Well, I've spoken my piece. Now there's nothing to say. Please stay, Sally, stay, Sally, stay. You may think that in time I'll forget how it was, but that's not so. Don't go, Sally. Now, you want to tell me what's wrong? Nothing. Not a thing. I'm pregnant. Are you sure? Well, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? The usual thing, I guess. You've done it before? Thousands of times. You don't think you should discuss this with the father? Why? To help pay the doctor, for oh, one God, thing. Oh, God, it is a hateful doctor. Then maybe what and anyway, who is the father? Could be anyone. Could be me. Sally, it could be me. True. And if it's mine, well, we I... We know, will we? Well, we could, yes. Oh, yes. I... Nine months of being sick every morning. Then the happy day in whom does it resemble Max? A horrid little German infant with a mustache ordering us about. I'd take the chance. Or perhaps an oriental. Mm. I seem to recall a taciturn relation. Yeah, <laughs> Sally, do me a favor. Shut up. Can we be serious for one minute? Oh, I doubt it. You know, this just might be the best thing that ever happened to I us. I doubt it. Because the truth is we're drifting. We have no focus to our lives. A baby could make all the difference. I know it would to me. I'd get a job. I'd have to. And I'd stay home nights. I'd write the novel, wash the diapers. The whole bit. Sally, I would be a terrific father. I love children. This is totally crazy. I know. That's exactly why I thought you might go for it. Will you do something for me, please? At least think about this before you see any doctor. It would never work out. It could. Clifford! Oh. I do not wish to intrude. Would you like some gin? Only if you will join with me. Well, maybe just this once. What's on your mind? Well, you remember I mentioned to you the possibility of an occasional business trip to Paris. If you are interested, I think, in the next few days. What would I have to do? It's so simple. You go to an address I give you, you pick up a small briefcase, you bring it back to Berlin, and I pay you 75 marks. 75 marks? Yeah, and I guarantee you are giving help to a very good cause. Well, whatever it is, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. As you wish. Is tomorrow okay? No, tomorrow we are all going to a party. I think I'll skip it. Why, Clifford? Let's just say I'm turning over a new leaf. Turning over a new tree. <laughs> and you are turning over as well, Sally. Who knows? <laughs> Cliff and I may become two of the most utterly boring people you ever met. <laughs> but you will go to Paris. Absolutely. Anything for a buck. Prose it. Prose hey. Prose it. Sitting pretty, I've got all the money I need. Ooh. My dearest friend Fritzi is out of his wit. He has four starving children to feed. <laughs> but me, I'm sitting pretty, I've got all the money I need. <laughs> I 
know my little cousin Eric has a credit that's hysterical and also cousin I'm an adipon his mother's sermon and my sister and my brother took the hawking one another too. But I've got some talents which build up my balance so even my bankers agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. I'm sitting pretty. I've got all the money I need. Money makes the world go round, the world go round, the world go round. Money makes the world go round, it makes the world go round. A muck a yen, a buck or a pound, a muck or a pound, a buck or a pound. All that makes the world go round, the clink, clink sound can make the world go round. Money, 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 money. If you happen to be rich and you feel like a knight in the day, but you can pay for the gay escapade. If you happen to be rich, alone, and you need a companion, you can ring. Cause I'm made. If you happen to be rich, and you find you are left by your lover, moan and you groan quite a lot. Take it down to the gym, call a cab, begin to recover on your 14th cat and yacht. What? Hello?
My German mark. You can't keep that girl down. <laughs> All right. Don't say it. I know it by heart already, so no lectures, please, about sailors. They are lonesome, patriotic German boys. I have a duty! After all, sisters under the skin. <laughs> Fräulein Koss, yeah. uh, this fine lady is not your sister. This fine lady has just honored me by consenting to give me her hand in marriage. Marriage? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. We marry <clears throat> in uh, three weeks. Three weeks. So, a little respect for the future Frau Schulz, if you please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Frau Schulz. <laughs> Thank you, Herr Schulz. You were supreme. What else could I do? Such a magnificent lie to preserve my reputation. But why did I say in three weeks? Why not three months, three years? <laughs> this way she will find out the truth so quickly. Unless, unless... Unless what? You said unless. Oh, well, this is foolish. I mean, after all, who would have me? An elderly widower, bald-headed, with heartburn, and a little fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Am I such a bargain? An unbeautiful spinster? 
with some rooms to let, poorly furnished. I work 14 hours a day. I do my own scrubbing. My right leg bothers I me. I have such palpitations. I'm not a well man. Am I a well woman? What are we talking about? We're alive. <laughs> and what good is it alone? I mean, if you would even consider marriage. I will consider but it. But take your time, by all means, no hurry. We should talk about this, you know. We cannot marry merely to humiliate Fräulein Koss. I assure you, Fräulein Schneider, that is not the case. Oh, let us be honest. Had she not seen us, you would not have proposed today. Then tomorrow. You mean that? It was in my mind. Oh, it's all so impulsive. You hesitate because you have never been married. It frightens you, but believe me, it can work wonders. How the world can change. It can change like that due to one little word, married. See a palace rise from a two-room flat due to one little word, married. And the old despair that was often there suddenly ceases to be. For you wake one day, look around and say, somebody wonderful Marry me. So you do not think it would be better simply to go on as before? No. So the world can change. Can it change like that? Due to one little word. Marry. Can a palace rise from a two-room flat due to one little word, married? And the old despair that was often there suddenly ceases to be. Somebody wonderful. Somebody wonderful. Mary. Ah, Franz Sally, I have good news. Mm. Fräulein Schneider and I are to be married. Oh, how wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> well. It is not decided yet. Oh. Then you're engaged. What? Engaged? Oh, oh yes, my. yes, engaged. Will there be a party? Is that appropriate? Very appropriate, usually. Oh, but uh, who will come? How many people do we know? Our friends, our acquaintances. All three. Oh. I'll do the inviting. I know lots of people. Oh, oh. There will be music and dancing. Oh, a party here. That, um, that will disturb my guests. Uh -huh. Very well. Then it will be at my shop. Oh, I think that's foolish. It's a waste of money. Have you ever had an engagement party? Of course not. And neither have I. So I ask you, what are we waiting for? It's time. <laughs>
was Paris divine. Divine. Was there any trouble? No, but I'll be happy to get rid of this. Is Ernst here? No, not yet. But come and see the lovely gifts we're giving Fraulein Schneider in her shoes. Uh, right. I have Bradshaw, you're back. Um, yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Fraulein Schneider, may I? Please. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, come and open our present. Be careful. Oh, oh. Herr Schulz, look. Crystal. Can't crystal. It's for fruit. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, and I shall keep it filled. I promise, as long as we live, this bowl will not be empty. <laughs> Fräulein Schneider! <laughs> I am welcome. Oh, Fräulein Koss, please forgive me. I did not invite you. But only because I know you work in the evening. <laughs> Tonight I am free! <laughs> I should live that long. My, uh, cousins? From Hamburg. <laughs> yes, come. <laughs> My cousins! So Rudy! Rudy, this is Fräulein Schneider's party. If you must dance, dance with her. Fräulein? Hmm? No, no, dancing. No, 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 no. Dance with her, Otto! Rudy! It is my pleasure, Fräulein. Oh, you're far too young. It's out of the question. Oh, it's absolutely unthinkable. Unthinkable, yeah? Absolutely. <laughs>
Clifford. You have the briefcase, eh? Bubbles from Paris. Perfumes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. I guarantee this is such a good cause on so for you. Oh, thank you. Cause <laughs> 75 marks is a gift from heaven. Yeah. Well, now I must congratulate Fräulein Schneider, if you will excuse me. Dance with me. Do I have to? Fräulein Schneider. I wish you much happiness. Thank you, Herr Ludwig. I am so sorry to be late, but there was a meeting, an important meeting. One does what one must, huh? Yeah. But now I must meet your groom-to-be. Hmm? Oh, yes, Herr Schulz. Herr Schulz, where is he? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's over there having a schnapps with everyone. <laughs> You, you might have to forgive him. He could be a little bit, oh. you understand. Good evening. Good evening. You must have a drink with me. Who is this? This is uh, Herr Ludwig, an old friend, Herr Schulz. Herr Ludwig, you're most welcome. Please join me in a schnapps, and we have some beautiful girls. And I will introduce you to them, but I do not know their names. So you must introduce yourself. Ho, ho, ho. Would you care for another little schnapps, sir? Eh? <laughs> You, you haven't given him the first one yet. No? No. Oh. I'll do it. Thank you. Nothing for me? You have had enough, huh? Oh, you hear, you hear? Not even married yet. Already she's in charge. <laughs> and it is pleasant. Oh, yeah. Finally, someone cares if I'm foolish. Many, many happy years to an outstanding couple. Oh, what beautiful dancing. Hi, buddy. Dance? Of course. Come on. Dance? Hello, Dan. Not right now. Peace, the dies. You have Japanese. There's a way, Gottfried sent his regards. Who? Gottfried von Schwarzenbaum. Have you already forgotten him? Yes, I've already forgotten him. Remember me, Fräulein Koss? <laughs> <laughs> you must answer me. Come. <laughs> a pleasure, Fräulein. <laughs> ah, Clifford, bitte, you will watch my coat, yeah? I want your hat. <laughs> <laughs> the coat and the briefcase. Eh? Uh, since you did not wish to know my politics, I am sorry. This is the good cause. Our party will be the builders of the new Germany. Yes, I've been reading your leader's book. Oh, enough politics. What does it matter? We are still friends, eh? Close friends buddies. <laughs> <laughs> A delightful party, Fräulein, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Herr Schulz is the most generous host. <laughs> and he should be. <laughs> he could afford ten times as much. <laughs> <laughs> they have all the money, the Jews. <laughs> Herr Schultz. I have changed my mind. Will you excuse me, Fräulein? It is my pleasure. Fräulein Schneider, I must speak with you, please. You and I. We are old acquaintances, yeah? I have sent you many new lodgers, so let me urge you. Think what you are doing. This marriage is not advisable. I cannot put it too strongly. For your own welfare. What about Herr Schulz's welfare? He is not a chairman. He was born here. He is not a chairman. Good evening. I am sorry, Clifford. Good night, Fräulein. Bitte. Oh, Herr Ludwig, you are not leaving so soon. I do not find the party amusing. Oh, but it is just beginning. Come, we will make it amusing. You and I, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Quiet, please. Herr Ludwig, yeah. this is for you. The sun on the meadow is summery warm. The stag in the forest once free. But gather together to greet the storm. Tomorrow belongs to me. The branch 
gives a linden its leafy and green. The Rhine gives its gold to the sea. But somewhere glory awaits unseen. Tomorrow belongs to me. Sing with me, Herr Ludwig. But Leben is great and it's close and it's high. The blossom and bursts are so free. But soon said the whisper, arise, arise. Tomorrow belongs to me. And now every heart. Tomorrow and father and show us a sign. Your children have waited to see. The morning will come when the world is mine. Tomorrow belongs to me. Denn die Idee und die Bewegung sind Lebensausdruck unseres Volkes und damit ein Symbol des Ewigen. Es lebe die nationalsozialistische Bewegung. Es lebe Deutschland.
Schneider, good morning. Good morning, Herr Schulz. New apples fresh off the tree. Perfection. Please. Perhaps later. <laughs> About the party last evening, I do not remember it too well. Was I that inebriated? Can you ever forgive me? For what? A few glasses of schnapps? I promise you no more drinking. On our wedding day, you will be proud of me. I'm already very proud of you. But as far as the wedding is concerned... Yes? There is a problem. A new problem. A new problem? Well, new to me because I hadn't thought about it before. But last night at the party, my eyes were open. And? And I saw that one can no longer dismiss the Nazis. They're my friends, they're my neighbors. How many more are there? Of course, many, many. And many are communists and socialists and social democrats. 
So what is it? Do you wish to wait till the next election and then decide? But if the Nazis come to power? You will be married to a Jew, but also to a German, a German as much as anyone. But I need a license to rent my rooms. If they take it away... They will take nothing away. Fräulein Schneider, it is not always a good thing to settle for the lowest apple on the tree, the one that's easy to reach. Climb up a little way. It's worth it. Up there, the apples are so much more delicious. But if I fall... I will catch you, I promise. I feel such tenderness for you, it is difficult to express. Are we too old for words like love? Far too old. I am no Juliet and you are no Romeo. We must be sensible. <laughs> and live alone. How many meals have you eaten alone? A, a thousand, five thousand? Twenty thousand. Then be sensible. Governments come, governments go. How much longer can we wait? Let me peel you an orange. I'll do it. And the old despair that was often there suddenly ceases to be. For you wake one day, look around and say, somebody wonderful. Oh, God! Oh, oh it's, it's nothing, nothing. Children on their way to school. <laughs> Mischievous children, nothing more, I assure you. School children, young, full of mischief. You understand? I understand. But if they could see her through my eyes, maybe they'd leave us alone. Tickle, tickle. Whoop. She's such a monkey. How can I speak of her virtues? I don't know where to begin. She's clever, she's smart, she reads music. She doesn't smoke, drink gin like I do. Yet when we're walking together, they sneer if I'm holding her hand. But if they could see her through my eyes, maybe they'd all understand.
I understand your objection. I grant you the problem's not small. But if you could see it, so my She wouldn't look Jewish at all. Try again tomorrow. Oh, and you'll find something, I'm sure of it. President of a bank. They're closed for good. Well, I've the most marvelous news. Guess who visited me today? Bobby and Victor. They say business is way off at the club since I left. So who's making a triumphant return immediately? Listen it, heaven. Heaven. Think of the money, Cliff. We need it so badly. Not that badly. I don't understand you. Really, I don't. I mean, first you tell me you're not going to Paris for Ernst anymore, even though it does seem the very easiest way in the world to make money. Or the you... hardest. Someday I've got to sit you down and read you a newspaper. You'll be amazed at what's going on. You mean politics? What's that got to do with us? Oh, you're right. Nothing has anything to do with us. Can't you see, if you're not against all of this, you're for it. Or you might as well be. Cliff, do you realize we hardly ever laugh anymore? Laugh? It was so refreshing today with Bobby and Victor. <laughs> they laugh at everything, <laughs> especially at the thought of you and me in the cottage at the end of the lane. They found that hysterical. Come in. I intrude. No, 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 come in, Fräulein Schneider. Is that the fruit bowl? Is something wrong with it? I cannot keep it. But why? An engagement present, but there is no engagement. What do you mean? We have reconsidered, Herr Schulz and I. Fräulein, you can't give up this way. Oh, yes, I can. That's very easy for you to say. Easy fight. And if you fail, what does it matter? You pack your belongings. You go to Paris. You don't like Paris, where? That's easy for you. But if you were me, with time rushing by, what would you do? With the clock running down, what would you do? The young always have the cure, being brave, being sure and free. But imagine if you were me. Alone like me, and this is the only world I know. Some rules to let the sum of a lifetime, even so. I'll take your advice. What would you do? Would you pay the price? What would you do? Suppose simply keeping still means you manage until the end. What would you do, my brave young friend? Grown old like me, Neither the will nor wish to run from a child like me who longs for her bed when work is done. Grown wise like me who isn't at war with anyone. Not anyone. 
the choice must be. Go on, tell me. I will listen. What would you do if you were me? Caroline Schneider, if you marry Herr Schultz, whatever problems come up, you will still have each other. All of my life I've managed by myself. It's too old a habit to change. I have battled alone, and I've survived. There was a war, and I survived. There was a revolution, and I survived. There was an inflation, billions of marks for one loaf of bread, and I survived. And if the Nazis come, I will survive. And if the communists come, I will still be here renting these rooms. For in the end, what other choice have I? This is my world. I, I regret very much returning the fruit bowl. It is truly magnificent. I regret everything. 